Hi everyone, welcome to the farm. Today I'm going to bring you along as we milk the cows and try to answer some questions that some of you may have had in the past. Kevin is milking tonight, so let's go see where he's at. So this here, this area, this room that I'm in right now is called the utility room. It's where the coolers are, the water heater that we fixed. Not we, but the guys. Um, but, see the water on the ground? Um, it was good for a while. It's only dripping now, it's not like gushing out. They're probably gonna have to re-weld that or we're gonna have to look into getting another one. This is our prep station. Not that, that's just dog shampoo for whatever reason. Um, and this is where our iodine is, which is our pre and our post dips. Um, we use the same thing, it's called Legend. The air compressor here, this is what runs the, um, the stalls so that you can open and close. Uh, vacuum pumps, all that good stuff is back there. There you are. Oh, you started without me. I didn't start without you. Is that okay? I don't know. The cows are coming in. Yeah, they're not. So, here comes the first cows out of the first group. Mackenzie is bringing them in. Hold the door open. Not holler picked up today, so we gotta. What does that mean? We gotta get the tank ready to put milk in. So this is our wash line. Which That's puts, what puts the water and the detergent and the acid in. So these are what he will fill with um, the product that cleans the tank. Yeah, this one he puts the soap in, and this one puts the sanitizer. So it's nice and clean in there. Yep. Can I have a peek? Well, if you want to. Yeah, well, I'll have a peek. Got all these little knobs and things that you don't want to put inside the tank. <laughs> but they have been known to fall in a time or two. Not very often. I think Ethan had it once. So, oh. not going to be able to see nothing. Can't see anything, can you? That thing. This is a valve for washing. That way, uh, when the tank is, it keeps the water in the tank. So when it's washing, it keeps the water in the tank. Oh. So it's an why? Automatic. Why couldn't that keep the water in the tank? Because this is an automatic valve. It shuts when the water goes in the tank, and it opens when. It's done washing, so the tank drains. But I don't have to manually drain it. Okay, yeah. So it's an automatic wash. And that's how the milk gets in the tank. This is the filter. Well, this side already filled up, but nobody wants to come in on this side yet. She's thinking about it. Friday night, date night in the parlor. Yeah, there you go. This is the first group of cows. Yup, and so this is how he cleans them. We've already, he's already um, sprayed them with the iodine and stripped out some of the first milk. Yep. And now, um, he just takes one of those towels that have been washed and dried and then, yeah, it goes through and does all eight of these at one time. Yeah. Then what do I do then? Well, they have to wait and see. Time for the first milker to go on. In a little bit, you'll hear the first puff of milk into the tank. And if you're by the tank, you can hear it hit the bottom. Oh yeah? yeah.
So now the Malik is gonna travel from here down here, and it's gonna go across here, all the way around, all the way around here. Goes in here into this receiving jar. This receiving jar can't really see through it, um, but once this fills, you'll hear it kick on. Then this, when it kicks on, the milk will then be pumped out into here, which is the filter. And then it goes up, all the way up here, all the way into the other room. Um, and it goes into this. This is called a cube cooler, which helps brings the milk down to 52 degrees before it then gets dropped into the bulk tank where it finished cooling with the um, cooling system. And that is pumping the milk out right now. You hear that? Just pumped it all out. I don't remember how many gallon, how many pound that is. It's either 40 or 60 or something. So that just, so that just keeps doing that over and over and over. And then it looks like Kevin's already got them done. And, gone on to working on the second batch already. Once in a while you get this, where air comes in, and you just have to adjust this a little bit. This one, this one, this side here, it's called a quarter, milks out a little bit faster than the other ones. So you just adjust it. Once the production slows down a little, then you push push these buttons down and then there's a float in there and then once that float drops that means it's time for the milker to come off and it will automatically take that milker off. In case you think that our cows don't poo in the parlor, they do. And then we just wash it away. So this cow here, if you were a gambling person, you'd bet on her pooping because she about poops every time she comes in. <laughs> she, is known, she, is, she is known to poop. She's known to poo in the parlor. And then the everybody wants a chance. Oh, man. Uh, I think I got that in my hair. Yeah, I will work on the laundry. I'll work on the laundry, which is something that always needs to be done. And get this load in the dryer and then start another load. We always like to have um, fresh towels ready for when the next, the morning milking or the next milking so that they never have to they never have to worry about um, having wet towels. They always want to have towels that are ready uh, for that next milking.
I'm going to ask a few questions to the farmer who knows it all. You know it all, right? All I know is much, I think I do. Do all farms smell alike? Ooh, that's a very good question. I know. Came uh, up with it myself. I don't know. I know the answer. What? You don't. What's the answer? Not all farms smell alike. Every farm smells different. Every farm's poo smells different. I know that growing up on my folks' farm, their poo smelled a lot different than when I started coming here to Kevin's farm. Kevin's farm's poo don't. <laughs> I just couldn't get used to what this farm smelled like. It smelled so weird. It was so different. But now that I've been here, you know, I don't even smell our poo really. Nope. And I think other farms <laughs> stink now. So, yeah. Every farm smells different. Do you agree? Yeah, every, you know, everybody feeds a little different. And, you know, and maybe Jersey smells different, whole seeds, I don't know. It, I think it has to do with the way every farm feeds a little different feed. And, yeah. Once in a while we'll have it where a cow will only produce milk out of two, three of the teats and so then it's not a four teated cow, it's a three teated and so I have one and I'll show you. Like this one here, it's there but it doesn't produce any milk and when it was young it just didn't form properly but all three of the other ones produce milk. Um, quite abundantly. So we just um, hook it up on only three. We leave this, um, we don't hook the milker up onto that one. They make plugs that just um, go in here and plug it. We usually just kink it back and uh, no air can get through it that way. So this is how we do it. We just kink it off and away she goes. He was a female at first, but I found out real quick. 
So sometimes we do milk cows in the bucket and the really the only time is is when we have a fresh cow, she still has colostrum and we're gonna um, give that to the baby. So we bypass the VSO which goes down to the line and it goes directly into this bucket. And then we'll bottle feed the calf with this colostrum. Sometimes we will use the bucket if the cow's milk doesn't look healthy. Um, but we don't really have that very often. Next question, while we wait for Sanders to bring in the next group, um, do we do we use antibiotics on our dairy cows? Um, we kind of like to stay away from antibiotics, um, I, uh, just because of the fact that I don't really like to treat cows, and then if something goes wrong, like if somebody mouth one in the tank or something, um, that's why we don't. Uh, we use more natural approach to it. We use the uh, vitamin, um, and they seem to work pretty well. And just the fact of hand stripping out. A lot of times we'll do it. We like, we just That's want, if they have mastitis. Yeah. Um, so the only uh, really type of antibiotic we use is a dry treat. And uh, when we dry the cows off for a couple months and we uh, infuse their other with a uh, dry treat. So, um, otherwise than that, I just, I don't know, I kind of shy away from antibiotics. I guess. I'm, I'm more of a naturalist. Oh, and naturalist. Naturalist. I don't know. If, you know, if cows are healthy, they'll take care of themselves. And, uh, they have an immune system, and just and, like we do. Yeah, and I mean. And usually, they, if a cow's healthy. Yeah, they they, they take care of. Them. That's why we use vitamin route. Like if, if we suspect someone ain't feeling well or something, we give them actually a, quite a, a hefty dose of vitamins and stuff, and it works pretty well. So that's our thing to learn. Yep. All right, probably the last question of the evening. Last question? Yeah. I don't what? know how many questions they want to hear. Oh. Uh, so, what's your favorite part of being a dairy farmer? Uh, probably the cycle of the life you see from uh, birth to given birth to all in between. That's what you like the most? Yeah, pretty much. Milking's alright, but it's just seeing the life cycle. I like seeing how it's given birth. Yeah. So. Uh, and just being able to know that we're there to help supply healthy milk to you guys. So. Yep. Yeah. They're starting to show up. Yep. Second batch. Here they come. Hi, thanks for joining us as we now cows. It's a Friday night and uh, my turn to do chores. And thanks for coming along. You got anything to say? Nope, just hope you guys are having a very blessed day. We will see you in the next video. Bye.